Why? You pay the premium to get the privilege to run macOS and yet you want to devalue your MacBook by installing Windows? Every time I hear someone saying this, my brain just stops. Mac and Windows both are good for certain things, so why not pack both of them into one really well-made laptop? There is literally no reason for not doing this. You're not going to lose anything really and on top of that you will be able to play proper games on it. So in this video we're going to install Windows on this 16-inch MacBook Pro and then I'll show you what you need to do right after to make sure you get the most out of your hybrid Mac slash Windows computer. Let's get to it. What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video about MacBooks because I feel we are at that point where the hardware inside of these latest models is good enough to serve as a two computers in one. You get a powerful i9 Mac and a powerful i9 Windows both running from this high quality chassis. Now, of course, I usually take to creators on this channel, so our videos are aimed at people who create content, be it in After Effects, Premiere, or video production in general. But in this case, I think making a video about Windows on Mac would benefit literally everyone who's creating anything. If you are worried you need the latest 16-inch MacBook to do this, well, don't be. The same thing will work perfectly fine on previous generations as well. We just happen to have this one. Of course, if you are interested in this type of content, the red subscribe button below is for you and also that little bell icon next to it will ensure you get a notification when there is a new video on our channel. I've mentioned this before in one of my previous videos. Now, if you take anything from this video, let it be this. Go for one terabyte SSD. Basically, if you plan on installing Windows on your MacBook, make sure you have enough space for it. I would highly recommend having at least 150 or 200 gigs dedicated to Windows, especially if you're using it as your day-to-day -day computer where you have all types of apps, which means a lot of data. If you are running on 256 gig model, you can still do this, but make sure you stick to the end of this video as I want to show you how to use a special tool to enable read and write from both Windows and Mac partitions. This is helpful for keeping the data, let's say Dropbox, on one partition, but still being able to see it from both operating systems. So what do we need? Downloading Windows is a pretty straightforward process. You don't need to look for it for too long. It's available on the official Microsoft website. Choose Windows 10, then your language, and finally click on the 64-bit version to begin downloading. It's around 5 gigabytes, so while we are waiting for that, let's give a big shout out to our sponsor of this video, Photomotion for After Effects. Photomotion helps you convert your static 2D pictures into professional looking 3D photo animations, all within After Effects, so you don't need any external 3D software. It comes with multiple tools specifically designed for photo animations, such as portrait animations, parallax images, depth animations, and almost everything in between, including the ability to create cool things like cinema graphs and plotter graphs. This is the only photo animation toolkit you will ever need to create high quality, professional looking animations. And don't be afraid if you've never done any photo animation before, we've got you covered with more than eight hours of video courses and our own dedicated animation team on live chat that will help you whenever you need. So if you are thinking about making your images stand out, try creating 3D photos from them by using tools we included in Photomotion. And of course, let me know because I'm always really excited to see what you guys create with Photomotion. Windows downloaded, so let's install it by using a tool that comes with your Mac called Bootcamp Assistant. I've seen some people on Reddit asking if this is legal. Of course it is. Installing Mac on Windows machine, aka Hackintosh, is more of a greyish area. So let's open Bootcamp Assistant, click continue, select your Windows ISO image here, and then drag this thing to create a partition on your drive. Now be careful here because once the partition is created it cannot be adjusted. It's up to you how much space you're willing to allocate to Windows but keep in mind that anything below 100 gigs might not be enough for normal day-to-day -day work. Also be aware that Windows won't be able to write to Mac partition and vice versa out of the box. We'll install additional tool called Mac Toolbox from Paragon but keep in mind it costs around $40 but it will enable read and write between partitions so it's quite useful especially when you are running out of space. You are probably familiar with Windows installation already, pretty much the same process here. Set your preferred language and if you have a product key you can add it here. If you don't, you can still continue by clicking on I don't have a product key, you can always add it later. Hit next, select the version you want to install, next, next and then just wait for the installation to finish. When that's done, select your region, keyboard layout, Wi-Fi and if you want to sign in with your Microsoft account. You don't have to, just click on this offline account button and then confirm you are happy with limited experience. I'll leave this on you. If you are within Microsoft ecosystem already, it might be a good idea to log in with the same account to get 
get access to your OneDrive, etc. Otherwise, it's perfectly fine to choose to use an offline account. There's a bunch of other things Windows will ask you. You can enable or disable them. Again, up to you. So we are officially running Windows on a MacBook. There are just a few things we need to set up to give you the best performance. First thing is the monitor brightness. By default, Windows enabled automatic dimming of your screen based on your surroundings, but I find it to be too dark. So let's head over to display settings and uncheck this. If you plan on using an external monitor with your laptop lit closed, you need to disable sleep mode, otherwise your MacBook will go to sleep as soon as you close the lid. You can disable this in power options by going inside additional power settings and clicking on choose what closing the lid does. I personally recommend keeping this on while your MacBook is running from battery and disable it while it's plugged in. That's the default behavior of macOS anyway. You don't want to end up in a situation where you pack your laptop to your backpack while it's still running because it will most certainly overheat. Command key on your keyboard acts as a Windows key which is a problem because things like copy paste by using Command C and Command V are not going to work. You have to press Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Not a big issue but it becomes quite annoying when you need to adapt to these different keyboard layouts. So let's fix this by installing a tool called Sharp Keys. I'll put the link in the description section below. Open Sharp Keys and click on Add down here. You have a list of keys on left and right so whatever you select on the left will be mapped to the key selected on the right side. To make our lives easier click on Type Key, hit that left command button, click OK and do the same thing on the right side but this time select your left control Key. Hit OK and you have your first key binding ready, but we also have to do the same thing the other way, so mapping our left control key to our left command key. Otherwise you won't have Windows key, which is actually quite useful to have. So let's do the reverse thing here and when you are done, hit right to registry and either log out or restart your computer. So you might be surprised that it automatically boots into Windows instead of Mac and it doesn't show you any bootable partitions. To change your preferred operating system, open Bootcamp Assistant and select either of these. The next time you restart your computer, it will boot into that system. In any case, you can hold down Alt while booting up your machine and you will be able to override this setting. One thing that annoys me on Windows laptops is the trackpad. Fortunately, MacBooks have really great trackpads, but unfortunately, you won't be able to use its full potential on Windows unless you install new drivers for it. Thanks to some amazing open source people, we can install better Windows precision drivers on almost all MacBooks, which is awesome. Head over to this link and before you do anything else, check if your computer is supported and buy this guy coffee. Then click on releases over here and download the latest ARM or AMD version. It is important to unzip the archive first, then go inside and right click on this INF file and choose install. Confirm and now you should be able to go to settings and configure your touchpad for gestures and other cool stuff. Do you remember how we split this drive into two partitions at the beginning of this video? I warned you, Windows won't be able to see your Mac partition and vice versa. Why is that? Well, Windows uses NTFS while Mac runs on APFS or HFS+. Thankfully, there's a tool from Paragon called Mac Toolbox, which is a collection of several apps that you install on both systems and enable things like read and write between these partitions or changing your disk space allocation between partitions after you installed Windows, which is kind of cool. Let's head over to their website and you will most likely see some sort of discount, so you should be able to get the entire Mac Toolbox for around $40. So when you get it, head over to your Paragon account and you should be able to see all of these tools listed under my products. Because my MacBook drive has APFS file system, we're going to need APFS for Windows. A little caveat here, if your APFS drive has encryption enabled, you won't be able to access that Mac partition even after you install APFS for Windows. The solution to that is disabling encryption, which is in my opinion not the best thing to do. So instead of installing APFS for Windows, let's jump to macOS and install NTFS for Mac, which will allow us to access Windows Drive from Mac OS. It would be better to have the ability to do the same from Windows, but you would have to disable that encryption on APFS first. So let's switch to Mac OS, download and install NTFS from Mac, and you should be able to read and write to that partition without any issues. This will save you quite some time, especially when your primary OS is Mac, because you can easily transfer stuff you need to that bootcamp partition, switch to Windows, and use it there. I know for sure there's a large chunk of you there who 
installed Windows on Mac so you can play games on it. Isn't that right? Are you one of them? Well, I certainly am, so I made another tutorial for setting up bootcamp specifically for playing the latest games on it. There should be a link to that video somewhere over here. In that video, I go over installing a custom GPU driver that can really help you make the most out of your hardware, especially on machines like this 16-inch i9 MacBook. So if you are interested in playing games on your freshly installed Windows, definitely check that video too. And that's pretty much it. You now have a fully functional Windows running on your MacBook. If you have any questions, write them into the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the big red subscribe button too, because we are going to do way more of this kind of content and you will be the first to know. Until next time, my fellow creatives.